All right, good morning, church. Oops, sorry about that. So one of the challenges, hold on, give me a moment. Take the marbles out of your pocket. <laughs> okay, hopefully that, that'll be better. One of the challenges with getting these mics a little bit higher and higher volume, which we need to have so more of us can hear in this sanctuary and our recording can pick up is that uh, if I bump this in any funny way, it's bad. I'll need to turn on that screen in a little bit, but luckily I have a, a written script here as well. Uh, I know a few things, and everything I know is pretty much inside of the announcements. Uh, happy birthday to Don and Lyle and Sandy today. Um, a couple of things that I really would like you to note. That next Sunday, my friends, is Reformation Sunday. That is the Sunday that we celebrate <clears throat> a little over 500 years ago. Uh, the beginning of this thing called the Reformation, and maybe we get reminded that, that the Reformation wasn't a thing that was 500 years ago, but that our church is always reforming, always changing, always growing. Um, the Holy Spirit is always up to something, right? So this isn't a party about how awesome that was 500 plus years ago. Uh, this is the, both that, but a celebration of us embracing and holding on to that gospel promise and how that gospel promise shows up in this world. Uh, we will have a guest preacher uh, minister Eugene Smalls, who is my neighbor uh, and a minister with the Madison Pentecostal Assembly. He does a lot of prison work and then a bunch of other things. I'm not sure what he's going to talk about. I do know he's going to preach on Jeremiah and John next week, so we've talked a little bit about that. Um, I really encourage you to wear red. Some of you are already wearing red because you're Badger fans, and God bless you. Um, it be hard some weeks to be a Badger fan, um, but... Uh, let's wear red next week, uh, and the colors in here will all be red as well. Uh, please note uh, the left side and bake sale on November 4th. Uh, we'll also be um, raffling a quilt, and, that, and the proceeds from that quilt raffle will support our young adults going to the National Youth Gathering. There really will be a National Youth Gathering this year. We've only been trying for three years, guys. Um, but the, we will actually do it, and that is super exciting. Thank offerings coming up on November 12th. Also, uh, November 5th will be All Saints Sunday, so if you uh, please get your names into the office, uh, anybody that you like to remember or commemorate, they don't have to just have gone into the holy embrace of our God uh, in the last year at any time and anywhere, anybody that you want to remember. Um, yeah, are there any other announcements for the good of God's people? They do laugh because I'm always trying to get work done on Thursday, and those people are just laughing so much over there. It's, it's hard to concentrate. Our, um, any other announcements for the good of God's people? I want to thank uh, all the folks that came out on Wednesday evening uh, to come and do highway cleanup. It is always an interesting when I get a chance to do that. This year I, I, I collected, what, uh, one and a half uh, pairs of socks and two pairs of work gloves, a pair of pants, 
I just don't understand where people are, why, why they don't need their clothes. Um, but if they need clothes, we have a clothing closet, so they'll be okay. So um, our choir is going to open us up this morning with an anthem, The Lord is in His Holy Temple. This is me stalling for Al as he comes down. He's my assistant this morning. Uh, but you, if it's a little cold this morning, we're having some challenge with our furnace. It doesn't want to blow the warm hair that it's making into the sanctuary. So if you need to wear your coat or shiver loudly, God bless you. Please do that. So. Yeah, there's plenty of blankets. <laughs> Yeah, let's see, there's, there's five left, and there's a pretty one in, in, the, in the sanctuary that you should, you should bid to buy raffle tickets for. Let's uh, rise as we thank God for the power of baptism. All right, friends, all right, church, blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sins and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Please, God, satisfy, satisfy the world's needs through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, please bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, please grant hope. Where chaos reigns, please bring peace. We ask, through, ask this through Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit reign forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, our love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. So while teaching about forgiveness and sin, Jesus said this, whenever two or three of you come together in my name, I am there with you. So please, let's take a moment to greet those near you and share the peace of Christ's presence with one another.
up to all of you who are worshiping up with us with us outside this morning. One of my favorite things to do is during the piece is to get up here early and just sort of watch all of you love each other. Um, it was something I was told, you know, when I was three years ago or about when I was coming here or how much we loved and was missing that time of fellowship. So let's, uh, you know, keep using it and embracing it. And don't ever let me standing up here be like rushing you. Just keep loving each other. It's good. Uh, let us pray the prayer of the day together. Sovereign God, raise your throne to our heart. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed for you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I am you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. We'll sing the refrain twice at the beginning. i mm-hmm. 
worship the Lord and tremble. Thessalonians, Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Acacia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from the, you, not only in Macedonia and Acacia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. I invite you to rise as you're available for the gospel acclamation. Go ahead and hear a story about Jesus. This one, this story is from Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. So then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with Herodias, <coughs> saying, Teachers, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Well, whose head is, is this? And whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. Please be seated. Are uh, any young, young ones uh, like to join me up here for a children's message this morning? Good morning, Thomas. You're getting your steps in. I just saw you run upstairs, and then you had to run back down here. You want to do it a couple more times? We can wait. All right, very good, very good. So, 
Let's hear a story about two people. Their names were Paul and Silas. These two, they traveled to faraway countries so they could tell people about Jesus and this, all the good news that comes with Jesus. They've been to a place called Philippi, but now they were in a town called Thessalonica. That's a, that's a normal name, in Thessalonica. And so each day for weeks, they went to this place called the synagogue where God's people gathered to read the Bible and to worship God. And each time, Paul would talk about the Bible and how that Bible told that Christ, the Messiah, would suffer and die. And he told them that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah from God, the one that was going to save us and them, and in fact, had saved us and them. So it's good. Some of the people believed, right? And some didn't. And ones that believed joined Paul and Silas as believers in Jesus Christ. And many of the people that were lived in Thessalonica who had already, were already worshiping God before he even got there. And they became believers in Jesus also. This group included some women who were well known in Thessalonica. They were important people. So things were going really well until some bullies, I know we don't like bullies, became jealous of Paul and Silas. And they encouraged, though, they encouraged, these bullies encouraged other people to start trouble. And they attacked a guy's house named Jason, where Paul and Silas were staying. And they couldn't find Paul and Silas because they were hiding. But they did take Jason and others, and they arrested them. And they took them to court and said, these guys are making trouble. And they're making trouble at other places. And they say that Jesus is king. And Jesus rules this place, not, not the emperor. Well, Jason and the other believers, they, they had to pay their bail money, and they got out. And then as soon as it was dark, they helped Silas and Paul sneak away to a different town. But they had not stayed long. Paul was worried that the people there, the Jesus people there, Jesus people like you and me, right? You, the three of us, right? That they would start to find trouble. So he sent Timothy, who had not been there before, to help them. And when Timothy returned, he told that they were having a hard time so what do you think Paul did? What do, you think he, what do you think he did? He couldn't go back, right? So, I don't know, if a friend of yours is having a tough time, maybe you, maybe you call them or send them an email, right? Well, they couldn't do that back then because they didn't have telephones or emails, right? So they, but they could write letters. And we heard that letter today. And here's how it started. It said, from Paul, Silas, and Timothy to the, to the, church people, or the Jesus people in Thessalonica, grace and peace to everyone. We thank God for you whenever you pray. God loves you and has chosen you. We know this because you have received the good news in words through the Holy Spirit. The news of your your strong faith has made you a model for the other believers in other cities. Here's the thing. Paul never forgot those people there. He wrote many letters to them, right? And we even have three of those letters to them in our Bible today. That's how important they were. And, he, and they help us be, give us courage and help us be a model even when we're having a tough time in our faith. What do you think about that? Is that a good story? I'm going to say a prayer, and then I have a surprise for the two of you that you can't guess what it is. Yeah, huh? You always say that. Oh, good morning, loving God. Thank you for these two. Thank you so much for the life that these young people bring to us and and all the future things they're going to do, uh, all the ways you're going to, your Holy Spirit's going to invite them to go and be Jesus in the world for people till Jesus comes back. Thank you for the stories of Paul and Silas and Timothy's and all those first believers that, that give us courage and strength and give us models on, on, on what we could be and what we could do today and in the future. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, the surprise is some sort of Oreo. I don't remember which one. You think think they're double stuffed? Because they could be. Well, see, they were surprises to me at least. So, yeah, you can take two if you'd like. I'm going to take one. Very good. All right. It balances out. (laughs) Ken, it's not your birthday this week, so you get no Oreos. Eliel, are you here? Because you would get an Oreo. My prayer is that the Holy Spirit uses me so that you who are here and you, those of you worshiping outdoors with us, those of you worshiping in other parts of the building, 
those of you worshiping with us through time and space online, that, that you hear my God's promise for you today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I really like it when our readers also in the choir, because I always get confused about who's going to read, and then all of a sudden the voice comes out of nowhere, <laughs> especially when it's like some prophet, like Isaiah's like, oh, what? Okay. So we've probably heard that, uh, that old bit of folk wisdom, right? Be careful what you wish for, because you might just get it, right? Be careful what you wish for, because you might just get it. And our oracle, let's say, our little bit of reading from Isaiah, from, from this, is, this is normal Isaiah, right? So it's not Grandpa Isaiah, it's Daddy Isaiah, because baby Isaiah is later in Isaiah. There's probably three prophets in that Isaiah book. And so we're in the middle at this point. And that oracle about Cyrus, the emperor of the Persians, is, is, is one of those. But not for Cyrus, but for God's people. I'll talk more about that, but I, I really want us to remember like, that, 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 that in our culture and, and why it's important that we want to be careful what we wish for. You probably heard the story of the monkey paw. Let's go to the next slide. It is getting close to Halloween, so I suppose I could tell a scary story, right? So I'll give it, I'll give it in brief. Or if you don't like scary stories, I don't know, you can close your ears and go la, 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 but quietly to yourself so we don't disturb um, folks, right? There was a couple, and they were, they were, you know, they, they had a good life, and they were getting up in years, and they were thinking about their retirement, but, you know, their, their son was off working and starting his, his own life, and things were great. Uh, and then one day there was a knock on the door, and there was a friend of the, of the man, the grand of the father of the family from the army days. And the friend came in, and they caught up, and, and the friend uh, all of a sudden was acting really weird, and he ends up throwing this thing in the fireplace. And he goes, why did you do that? What is that? And, the, and he fishes it out, and it turns out this is this burnt monkey paw, and it has three fingers up. And the, and the friend says, well, all right, well, here's the deal. Uh, you can wish for something, and then one of the fingers will go down, and you'll get that wish. And the guy's like, yeah, that's really true. That's really funny. That's not going to happen. Right? And, and they finished their evening together, they finished their meal, and, and the friend went off. Um, well, they thought it was a joke. It's like, haha, what if it's true? What if it's true? So the, the dad had a, had a real, real great idea. He said, Well, I know, I'll wish for $25,000. Okay? What was the $25,000 for? Well, that was going to be enough to pay off the mortgage. So they wouldn't have to have a, make any more mortgage payments anymore and then they could really start thinking about retirement. It's a small amount. I don't know if, I, if it was me, I'd be like, can I win one of those $2 billion uh, Powerballs, please? <laughs> um, and nothing really happens. It's dark out. They did, he thought he felt the, the paw shake a little bit. They go to bed, but no money, no $25,000 showed up, right? And the next day, nothing, $25,000 didn't show up again either, and they sort of forgot about it. But the day after, uh, the mom was noticing that there was somebody, somebody walking outside, uh, kept repeating, walking back and forth on the sidewalk. And she opens the door, and she goes, sir, can I help you? And he looked really distraught, and he walked up, and he, had, he was wearing a hat, and he took off his hat, and he says, well, yeah, I'm, um, I'm, from, I'm from the factory where your son works. Can I come in and I talk to you? And the man said, hey, look, the, the company bears no responsibility, no liability for this, but your son had a really bad accident and got caught in one of the machines and is not alive anymore. And so, we, again, we're not responsible for this, but, but because your son was such a great worker and so loyal to us and just a good guy, we would like to give you $25,000. Okay. Well, now the mom and the dad are really freaking out. They've just lost their only child. Uh, they have no grandchildren. They're, they're really depressed. They're really sad. And then the mom gets it into her head one night. Hey, wait, where's that monkey paw? And she says, I know what I'm going to do. And she wishes for her son to come back to life. So now there's only one finger left on the paw. And all of a sudden, they hear a little quicker last time a... Knock on the door. 
keeps knocking on the door. Now, the dad had seen what happened to his son and knew that no good, had realized that no good comes from these wishes. And so he's looking for the monkey paw, and the mom's trying to get downstairs, and she doesn't move so fast, but she's trying to get downstairs to open the door because she knows her son is there, her everything, her purpose, her pride and joy. Knocking on the door, knocking on the door. Right when she gets the door open and unlocks the thing and is ready to open it, he finds the paw, and he wishes that the previous wish becomes undone. She opens the door. There's no one there. Right? What's the moral of this little scary season story, right? Well, it is be careful what you wish for because you might get it. Imagine if their zombie son had showed up and how tragic and sad that would be. Our reading from Isaiah, which it opens with this verse, thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him, to strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. In fact, this is not be careful what you wish for, but be careful what you pray for. Because God might give it to you. And give it to you in a way that you would be surprised about. You see, God's people, not just through Isaiah, but even before then, through history, had this sense that through Abraham, right, that Abraham was going to have offspring and give birth to nations, that somehow David and Solomon, right, that, that through them that there's, and, and their lineage, that they are going to, in some way, God's people are going to bring God's blessing to the world, right? That as God's servants, as God's people, the people of Israel are going to be used for the world so that the world would know their God and, in fact, our God. That it would be culturally dominant. Now, they didn't, they thought, well, look, let's look at the world. Let's look at the empires of the world, right? Let's look at what happened with Assyria when it came and took the northern kingdom. We can change the next slide. We don't keep looking at this monkey. Um, can if we want, but uh, even a, the king of Assyria would show up and knew God and said, hey, God, I'm working for God, and I'm going to go and take, take this kingdom, right? But they said, okay, what's supposed to happen is we're supposed to have an empire. We're supposed to, you know, have empire and dominance and, and span the world, the known world, and conquer things, and then we will not just give them our God as a gift. We're going to our God is better than your God in this religious warfare, and we're just going to dominate. That's how they assumed it was going to happen. In lots of ways, that's what they were praying for. There was lots of privilege and power to, to doing it that way. The elites and the powerful in, in that community would then even become even more elite and even more powerful because they'd be on top of a world hierarchy, a global empire. So they prayed for that. They thought that's going to be their salvation. But instead, God did something weird. God's God, our God, used a king, a king of kings, who didn't even know our God. And God's people were spread across the world far, far from their promised land. Cyrus is going to come and is going to get rid of the last sort of governmental, the kingdom of God's people. And it's going to spread them all over the place. Many of them are going to get shipped off to Babylon. Some get to stay in the land. But they're going to be all over the world. And to make it worse, that this Cyrus doesn't know our God. It's being used by our God is somehow we, it's one of these moments in our Bible where God uses what's not great to make something good. Not just something good, something gospel, something salvific out of it. But it was strange. But why? Why? Well, God is going to then, ex through God's people, expose the whole world that as being consumed by this global empire. In fact, they don't end up being consumed. In fact, they end up con influencing this global empire and the culture and sharing with so many more people about their God, our God. I reminded uh, when I began the candidacy process, I just, and you know, so many of us, and I would put myself included here, there is some ways that there is a, 
accident of birth that, that we're Jesus people. Like, we don't like to think that. We like to think that, that and, and maybe it's not true, but it seems like there's an accident of birth. Like, my mom and dad were Jesus people, right? So I'm a Jesus person, right? Some of us have been going to church forever, and our parents brought us, and our grandparents brought them, and so on and so forth down the line. I remember talking about candidacy. I said, man, if I was born in a different country, I don't know, if I was born in Egypt, I'd probably, I'd, I would, I'd worship our God, uh, but I'd be Muslim because that's what was there, right? And that's what happens when God's people get taken off to Babylon. We don't get, in a lot of ways, the, the groundwork and the framework, and we hear in our, in our second reading where, where Paul and Silas and other people are traveling all over the place and encountering what, what we would call Jewish folks, right? Ancient Jews. And they are only there because they got taken from their land and forced out into the diaspora. And then these random people, these Greeks or these Gentiles, the people who are not traditionally part of God's people, like us, are already out there and they're already believing in God because of their exposure to those folks. And then they hear about Jesus. God keeps doing the things that we hope for, but often in ways that we maybe didn't ask for, not the way that we would want to do it. There's so many days that, that, that are challenging and struggling, and, and I am and maybe my faith is being tested, and I'm asking God to come and save me, or save the people I love, or save this world, or, you know, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm open to being made negative by the news, you know, open my news app, and there's more bad news, right? And it's like, oh, God, come, please, save this, save this place, save these people, say, okay, save my kids, okay, and they've got time, save me, right? And we pray for salvation, and God's people, and the world was praying and yearning and hoping for salvation, but be careful what you pray for, because you may just get it. Because at least for us and our salvation, the way that we are, we are taken care of by God was done in a really weird way, that there was this guy named Jesus, and he was born in obscurity. And he lived a small life. And yeah, he was one of those weird itinerant preachers, right? If those of us saw the, saw that, went and saw the movie, I think it was earlier this year, right? He's one of those hippies that are out there that's like, oh my gosh, this guy, right? And sometimes he got to stay in people's houses. And, and he was, that's weird, that's strange. And then eventually he got killed on a cross. But that guy, Jesus, was God, who showed up to live with us as a human being, and that Jesus also breathed into our lungs. Like, we want God to claim us, save us, know us, and show up for us, so God did, right? And the people back then wanted the same, and God did, right? But again, be careful what you pray for, because you may just get it, because that prayer brought God to us as a mortal man. And we, mortal people, eventually killed him. But that showing up, that death, that death did something. It killed the power of sin and sickness inside of each of you. My friends, that is a promise. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and sing our song today, There's a Longing in Our Hearts.
yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. For wisdom, for courage, for comfort, hear our I invite you to rise as we confess our shared faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated and we can give our full attentions to God during the prayers of our community. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Hear us, God. Your mercy is great. Faithful God, your spirit animates the church throughout the world and binds believers near and far in the body of Christ. Equip us for the work of faith and enlarge our hearts for the labor of love. Hear us, God. Faithful God, the sea roars, the earth rejoices, and the heavens are glad at the wonders of all you have made. Bless the work of ecologists and conservationists and all those who safeguard the riches of creation. Hear us, O oh God. Sovereign God, your rule and authority is over the cosmos. 
as you once worked through the ruler Cyrus for the good of your people, accomplish your purposes through the work of elected leaders and public servants. Guide them with your wisdom and compassion. Hear us, God. Your mercy is great. So, caring God, your arms enfold all who are lonely, oppressed, despairing, sick, and suffering. We ask you to care for those who have hurt us in the past and those with blessings to celebrate. We especially pray today for the family of Ruth Nelson. We also pray for the people of the Middle East. There are victims, there are hostages, there are people that are trapped. Uh, somehow, help us humans find ways to peace because we can't seem to find it ourselves. We especially pray for anyone or anything we name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Pour out your abundant mercy on all whom this world has neglected, abandoned, and forgotten, that they may know your joy. Hear us, God. Hear us, God. Almighty God, all our life belongs to you. When earthly idols threaten to lead your church astray, remind us that you alone are the source of our eternal hope. Direct the work of church treasures, councils, and all who manage financial matters. Hear us, God. Your mercy is great. Everlasting God, the saints of every age have sung your praise and shared your word. We give you thanks for their witness and pray that we may join them as citizens of your unending kingdom. Hear us, God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah 58. I'll tell you what it really means to worship the Lord. Remove the chains of prisoners who are chained unjustly. Free those who are abused. Share your food with everyone who is hungry. Share your home with the poor and homeless. Give clothes to those in need. Don't turn away your relatives. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Church, thank you for supporting God's mission and ministry here at Decora with the resources God has first given you. We will now take a moment to collect your gifts and offerings as the table is set. There is also a station at the welcome table in the back for gifts given with credit or debit cards. Come now and visit your people, come and be near your children, stay with us, Lord, abide, shadows are deepening around us, this was the even time, come and be near your children, stay with us, Lord, Abide, come and be near your children, stay with us, Lord, abide. Among us, O oh Jesus, come now and visit your people, come and be near your children, stay with us, Lord, abide. Bye. 
Let's hear this story again. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. I invite you to rise as you're available. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now all people are called to Christ's table, so come and eat what is good. We'll be doing communion standing uh, here this morning. Uh, so uh, if you've ever participated in communion in the past, you're welcome to participate today because this meal belongs to Jesus, not us. Uh, please be seated in a moment for ministers and I to commune each other, and then... Um, and then the ushers will invite you up. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Here's the body of Christ that's given to you. Lamb of God, here's the body of Christ that's given to you. Here is the body of Christ that's given to you. Of Christ is shed for you. This here is the blood of Christ that is shed for you. Here is the blood of Christ that is shed for you. Amen. Amen.
The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. Someone. 
sorry, friends. Please go in peace and share that harvest. <laughs>